Hi all, if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If you are new, welcome. My name is Amira, and today guys, we are going to be digging into the new Nomad Cosmetics palette, which I am so excited to try on camera for you guys. I have used it already, this isn't a first impressions. I've done a couple of looks just in my everyday life with it, but I am so excited for this one because this is the one that is based on my hometown. Chicago. This is the Nomad Cosmetics Chicago Speakeasy Palette. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so let me show you what the palette looks like. You probably have seen this already, but I'm going to show you anyway. How stunning is this palette? How stunning is this palette? There you go. How stunning is this? She's a runner. She's a drag star. It's so pretty. Um, they did such a good job. I'm all, like looking at it, I'm like, how, where do I start? They did such a good job with this color story. Like, I have to say, Nomad has been kind of like hitting hard for me lately between the Fuji Five Lakes, which was their sort of like fall release, and this is their like winter, I believe, I'm assuming this is their like winter release. They have been doing such a good job with their color stories and their packaging. This is beautiful. It's velvet, it's like textured, and it's just so pretty and it makes you want to use it like when I opened this up I was just like oh my god I have to use this like tomorrow I like got home it was a late night I opened it up and I was just like I was so excited so yes we are going to do a look with this palette I've been playing with a lot of the neutrally tones because you can do a neutral look with this like it has a neutral section like it has this section here so I've been really digging into like this 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 I've been using a little bit of this shade here. So you can do a neutral look with this, but I really want to do like a like a smoky eye. And I've got a dark lip on. I really want to do sort of like a 1920s type of look, you know, esque look. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Let me zoom you in. I've already done my face makeup. I've also just got through doing um, my Lisa Eldridge swatch video, which is probably going to go out after this one and my lips are so tired that I didn't even think I was like mm, do I want to take this off and then put another lippy on but I figured this lippy would work really well this is um velvet myth from Lisa Eldridge but I think it's like a perfect lippy for this look that we're going to be doing so I've already primed my eyes that's all done so we're just gonna dig right in so let me grab a brush are my brushes clean no, but we're not going to talk about that. Okay, okay. So I'm going to take a refer 15 and I'm going to dip into, I think I'm going to dip into Knock and Speak Easy. I was going to do Blind Pig and that is this shade here. I might blend out a little bit with Blind Pig, but I'm going to use Knock and Speak Easy because I kind of want to just go in and go, go hard and go deep right away. That sounds really inappropriate, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Take your minds out of the gutter. So I'm taking that refer 15 and I'm just going in and blending this up and into the crease. The one thing I will say is I do feel like these shades are really pigmented and Nomad's shades, Nomad's mattes are pigmented anyway. But one thing that I've noticed with these is that I feel like they're almost slightly even more pigmented because as you can see, it didn't take a whole lot for me to build that up. Like we're done. Um, but I will say, just be careful with these. I've noticed with my primer that some of them were oxidizing, and I think it's because of the primer not being completely set when I did it. Um, I use the About Face Beauty primer. That is my primer of choice. Um, but I didn't notice that with, with it. So I would say give your primer a chance to like really set before you go in with these. Because they're so pigmented, they can kind of like stick and then you might get a little bit of oxy, you know, like where you get that little line where things don't want to blend. Um, this eye, my right eye tends to do that anyway. And so I have to do things to sort of prevent that. But I'm, I did notice that that was happening. Um, so I'm not just bringing this up and I'm gonna do the other side as well. I just said, take this a little bit higher. So we're gonna do that here on this side. Pretty. And now what I'm going to do, and I usually don't do this, but I think for this look, I'm going to have to, just to make it cohesive, I'm going to go in with a pencil brush. And this is a Sonia G Pencil Pro. And I'm going to take that shade on my lower lash line. We're just going to go right in and do that. Because like I said, I want this to be kind of like a smoky um, 1920s kind of vibe.
There we go. Do this side. And again, I'm using that same shade. I'm not changing tones quite yet. And I'm going to bring that down a little bit. So now I'm just going to kind of smoke it out even more and bring it down even further, which I don't usually love doing, but I feel like this look is going to call for it because it's quite intense. I'm now going to take a rougher 14. I'm going to brush it off on my little Sigma switch here, and I'm going to go into Capone. Now, Capone is a black. It's like a, actually, you know what? A 15. We're going to go in with a 13. I need something even smaller. So we're going to go even smaller, rougher 13. I'm going to go into Capone, which is this shade here. And I'm just going to apply this to the outer corner of my eye. Tiny bit. I'm going to tap because I'm not actually trying to like use the black in the traditional sense. I just want to deepen what I already have here with that black. And you can see that it's just, I'm not taking it further into the eye or any, you know, on the lid or into the crease or anything like that, just on the outer parts of the eye to deepen this corner up. And with black, I, you know, I always tell people, you, like, you don't have to be afraid of black, but you just have to kind of know what you're doing when you use it. And by that, I mean, like, know to use a smaller brush, to use a little bit of product. You can always dip back in. It's really hard to take black away. So if you are afraid, if you're concerned, if you're feeling a little nervous, just take a little bit and just slowly build up. You don't have to go like, uh, and then like try to make it work. You can, you can, I look, have lipstick on. This is a remnant of a video previously filmed, <laughs> but you don't have to um, go ham with black. You can go really, really soft with it. Now that that's done, I'm then going to take um, this rougher 14 that I was originally going to take, and I'm going to go back into Knock and Speak Easy, um, just because I want to make sure I'm marrying those tones again. And now what I'm going to do, because I'm going to do this at first, but I'm going to go into Knock and Speak Easy again, and I'm actually going to bring it all the way over all the way over, like so, into the inner corner. And then I'm gonna take that same brush that I used for the black, but I'm gonna use my single switch and clean it off a bit, get all that pigment out, and I'm gonna go into that same shade and I'm gonna just deepen that corner even more. But yes, I've used this palette a handful of times now. So again, this is not a first impression. I know how I feel about it. I think it's incredibly pretty. I think that um, the shades are really lovely. The formulation is really lovely. I haven't used as many of the metallics as maybe I would have liked to have used before filming, but we're going to go into them. So no worries. I'm then going to take this... Worker Pro from Sonya G. And I think I'm going to take the shade Blind Pig that is this lighter shade here. And I'm going to put that here. Just to give a bit of a gradient for it to blend out with. Lexo. You see how that just gives it a little bit more. It just like marries the shades a little bit more. I don't always do this with my eye looks. Usually because I'm just too lazy, to be quite honest. I don't have... Who has the time? Um, but for this look, I feel like you need to do that. You need to kind of have that bit of gradient there to kind of help the shades marry well together. So that's done. And now we're going to take, I think we're going to take, mm, we have some really good options here for the shimmers. I'm going to show you all of them. So this one is Bolvideri. Bul what is this? Boulevardier. Look how pretty that is. It's like the red, but it has a shift and it has like a purple shift. And I really like the idea of using that. And then we have here, this is Chicago Fizz. Very pretty. We have here, I believe this is Aviation. And then we have Southside. And then my personal favorite, Gin Ricky, which is this shimmery tone that I used on my eyes the other day. It's like, got this beautiful, like, golden, I don't even know if the camera's picking it up well. Let me see. It's got this beautiful golden 
peachy shift and I am a sucker for these types of shifts so we're definitely going to use this one but I think I'm going to use it in the inner corner not on the lid but what I want to use on the lid I think I'm going to use Boulevardier and I do not have setting spray anymore um my setting spray broke like the the actual spray part component broke so I have the bottle but I can't get any of the product out so I have to buy like a bottle that I can like transfer that over to so I can spray so we're gonna do this we're gonna do this dry y'all we're gonna do this dry we're taking Boulevardier and we're applying that to the center of the lid but I will say this I do like the way that these shimmers are applying the shimmers are applying very similar to the ones that were in the Fuji Five Lakes palette so I don't find these as um firmly pressed as um some of their other shimmers have been in other palettes these you can pick up really easily on a brush and they apply really well and i had it I, i'm not having a ton of fallout i'm also being very conservative about how i'm picking out or picking up the shades i'm not picking up a ton i'm just kind of going in and then i can always go back in if i need to but i'm just doing that because again i don't have anything to spray with and i also i probably can get more um more from the shades if I could spray them um as far as like getting a lot of that shimmer really showing and giving me what I want what I need um I think I'm gonna take we're not gonna take Jen Ricky and I'm gonna take it and I'm going to apply it to my inner corner but I'm also gonna take it up a little bit this is not as like traditional speakeasy style but that's okay I'm okay with that I just I really want to use it on my eye and I want to use it in a way that you can really see it so I'm taking it, and you can kind of see here, I'm taking it up into and above my crease, like above the crease, not into the crease, but above the crease. And I have hooded eyes, so I like doing things like this that kind of draw attention up. You know, it kind of draws attention up, and that's what this does. There we go. Bit there and you can't really see that but it just gives like a little you can it's like it's like a little bit of pop and it's leaving this part matte i'm now gonna take aviation i was gonna do um gin ricky but since i did that with gin ricky we're gonna take aviation which is like this purpley tone that has that shift and i'm using my refer 21 still and i'm going i'm dipping it on the side of the brush and that's a good way to pick up product if you can't spray your brush um for me, I find that works. I'm going to tap because I'm probably going to have some fallout because of the fact that I can't spray my brush. I'm really sad about that, guys. I was so upset. I was like doing my makeup and it was super early in the morning. And I was, I think it was actually with this palette. I was using this palette and I had sprayed my, um, I'd sprayed my shadows and then I sat it down and I guess it had fallen and I hadn't realized it. And when I picked it up, I was like, I still haven't found the lid. I'm like, it has to be somewhere. It has to be have rolled under a piece of furniture and I just can't access it. But it's nowhere visually that I could see. And I was just sort of like, what the heck? So yeah, so that is aviation. We're then going to take Chicago Fizz. I'm like, you know what? Let's use all of these because why the frick not? You know, I almost said the other word, but YouTube would have something to say about that. Alrighty, do you see? Oh, this is so pretty. All right, so this is what the finished product is looking like. It's so pretty. I really want to do something really heavy and smoky, and I want to incorporate those purples um, because they were calling to me, and I really haven't had a chance to play with them. I'm going to put some mascara on. All right, guys, I am still using the L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara, and I still don't know how I feel about it. Like, some days I love it, and other days I'm like, you suck. And I think today is a you suck day. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. That, that, that mascara is an enigma to me. All right, so this is the finished look. I kind of, I'm tempted to add something more, but I don't want to overdo it. I was thinking of doing a liquid liner, but I'm like, mm, I don't think it needs it. I think I'm going to leave it. I'm, sometimes you just kind of don't want to leave well enough alone. Let me zoom you guys out. And this is what the finished product looks like. I love it. And I kind of want to take um, maybe a little bit of Chicago Fizz and tap that in the center of my lid. I probably should have done this before I put my mascara on, but I didn't think of it. So sue me. 
Um, yeah, so putting a little bit of that in the center just to give it a little bit more pop. There we go. It's just to give the, the lid a little bit more, a little more lift. It doesn't like absolutely need that, but I just was like, I think that'll be pretty. But yeah, so we used quite a few shades. I used all of these shades here. I used all of these shades plus that one um, and Chicago Fizz. Um, we didn't, did we use Southside? I don't think we did use Southside. I'm not really, Southside doesn't speak to me as much. It's like this really like shifty purple green. It doesn't speak to me as much as like Aviation does. I mean, this is pretty, but it's very intense. And I feel like I have to do, if I was going to do a look, I'd have to do a look with only this one. But what I like about this is you can totally do, uh, you could totally do a sort of absinthe themed look with the shade and the green mill, which the green mill, let me just say this. I think they did a really good job with this palette as far as researching because the green mill, I used to live down the street from the green mill. It is a bar. It is a, a, you know, not a speakeasy, but it's a very popular Chicago bar. Um, as are some of these other names, I believe Violet Hour is a very popular, very popular um, bar that is very much like speakeasy ass. Like they designed it to be like that. Um, very popular. I remember when it opened, it was very like a big deal. I don't drink. So it's another reason why I don't like have a lot of experience with these places, but I do know of them. Um, and Violet Hour, I believe has really amazing mocktails from what I understand. I have to look and see. I could be wrong, but mocktails are a really big thing now. And they're a really big thing here in Chicago. So even if you don't drink and you come here and you want to visit like a popular bar, just see like what they offer because a lot of them offer really amazing mocktails now. The Drunken Goat is one, I believe. I believe Absent House is as well. Um, but yeah, I I really love this palette. And I love that they, they did one about Chicago. I, I like that they went with like old school Chicago, like 1920s speak prohibition, speak easy time. Because Chicago was, um, was an interesting place there. You know, that's, I mean, there is a shade in here called Capone for a reason. I'm just going to put that out there, okay? All right, guys, let me know what you think of this look. Let me know what you think of the palette. Um, I have a discount code with Nomad. It is not affiliated, but it does get you money off of your purchase. So it is Amira. I'm going to link it down below and also include the code. So if you're interested in this palette, just use that code to save yourself some coinage. Um, and you can also use it on other palettes in the on the website. I really love this palette. It's so cute. Like I said, I think Nomad has been killing it lately. Um, and I hope you enjoy this look. I do. This is very intense for me. The lippy kind of informed. I was like, mm, if I'm going to do this lippy, I got to go. I got to go hard, you know? So I hope this is, I feel like this is a look for a colorful girl, like a modern flapper look. You know what I mean? Where you still got the smoky eye, but it's like colorful as well. I feel like it works for that. All right. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye now.